But thank you for coming. This is not a presentation, but, but both. So it's mostly a, a team meeting, but also an opportunity for newcomers if they have any questions about the about the project, or they're interested in in joining. No. Okay, but well, then I think we can we can take a look on the questions that we have already identified. What do you think? I'm not sure if the people understood the first question. Are those who are not part of the LTS team interested in joining? Or yeah. are you just interested in uh, uh, the policy of the LTS team and want to watch out? Or any comment? Uh, I'm interested in, in joining maybe the, the LTS team. Actually, we exchange email about that and I still need to answer you uh, on that topic. Yeah. I, for now, I'm just definitely interested in finding more out, so please go ahead. Okay. Okay, well, internally, I think we need to define a process to dispatch the front desk duties, especially because uh, yeah, we need to rot rotate the front desk, and I don't have any week assigned in several months, just because this time, before it was Rafael who, who assigned the weeks, and then kind of tried to do it by ourselves, but it's not very well done, I think. It's not even fair in the distribution. But it was Rafael who wrote it yeah. down, so. Yeah. Uh, well, mainly uh, I wanted to see how it worked out because uh, it was suggested that I may, might not have to do it. Uh, it's not working well enough. So one of the possibilities uh, might be uh, that the front text duties include uh, the responsibility to dispatch further weeks if you see that you that you don't have uh, enough weeks assigned. I mean, for example, uh, each time that you start front text duties, you, you, you look up if you have assigned people for the two next two months, and if it's not the case, then you uh, either press uh, make sure that paper register or uh, dispatch using some predefined algorithm algorithm or, uh, or we come back to the initial solution where I do it but uh, I don't know what you prefer I can bring the make to anyone who wants to comment um, I was finding swapping quite difficult before so I think how whoever assigns them It's not ideal. Like whoever actually does it is okay. That makes a difference to I guess you. But um, it was like okay, I've been given this week. Can't really do it. I'm trying to swap. No one really replies. And you're like, uh, uh, uh. so I'm actually quite liking the new way of of doing it. Um, but yeah, I can see how that can leave. If you if you see you don't see that mail, you don't keep on top of that. You could have no no duty for a couple of months. So instead of assigning, uh, whoever checks must just send a new mail and make sure that uh, people sign up, and make proposals. I don't know. Uh, could uh, could we uh, instead put put in there? I am not available these weeks, and then uh, either either a program or um, or an individual then is responsible for uh, assigning a rotor, avoiding avoiding assigning people to those the weeks when they're off. Is this something that could work for everybody? So basically, yeah. you have to document uh, weeks where you're not available, and then uh, 
maybe one month before uh, we dispatch them or something or two months before yeah. I don't know how far you have how far in the future you have visibilities on your schedule <laughs> would you like to redistribute the the current uh, the, the future weeks because I think we are there are only four that they are working on the uh, in front desk and maybe more, we could more people should uh, do Sorry? it more people should do it you mean yeah 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 I think yes yeah let's try something like that So next question is this is a requirement by by the security team, by Salvatore especially. The to uniform synchronize the workflow with the security team, especially to triage CVS and file bug reports. But yeah. Already done. Okay, okay. This is also a suggestion from Salvatore. 
from the security team to handle no or, or no, no, I'm wrong. Uh, we were discussing about what to do with some non-DCA uh, issues because for several reasons they are not they are tagged non-DCA for stable, but we could fix them in old stable. So there are one, one of the problems, so one of the, the, the conditions is that we don't, the, we don't have a next point release. Uh, but we, so, someone, I don't remember who, but someone suggested that we should have a me mechanism to have this kind of, or well, an equivalent to reuse uh, packages with minor issues periodically, not to fix something minor immediately, but wait a little bit. I think uh, Moritz Müllenhof was uh, yeah. suggesting to introduce that concept as well for LTS. Uh, it was some days on the LTS mailing list, I think. Yes, his point was to that uh, minor issue should not trigger instant updates because, well, many security administ or many administrators will have to deal with it, and it was maybe better to patch them in point release, like for other stuff. I don't think we're ready for that yet, but. Uh, we, we, we could do, at some point it would probably be nice to, to not have a separate workflow for uh, for uh, LTS and usual release, so do actually continue to do point release. Uh, I don't think uh, right now is the best time, but yeah, maybe actually it makes point. sense, even more sense now that we're using the security.debian archive because um, Quite a few tools, no only of the main mirror, not perfectly of the security mirror, but. For, for instance, our package.debian, he said the uh, aptitude changelog, uh, the changelog viewing feature, which. changelog uh, viewing feature uh, which relies on some service which is only parsing uh, the main ar archive and not the security archive. I, s I believe we have a similar limitation with package.debian.org and stuff like that. So it would be useful at some point to consider doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure right now at the start of the WYSI cycle is the best time to do it. but. Um, well, in particular, given that I believe that the release team has been somewhat uh, annoyed by the switch to Wizzy because uh, w we dropped some architectures before they had the opportunity to merge them back and it was somewhat painful for them or something like that. Something like that. But well, uh, the, the, r the real question is uh, 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 how do we deal with uh, multiple meanings of new DSA because we tend to follow uh, the no DSA from from the security team. When security team ta tags an update as no DSA, we usually do the same, but we must take care when uh, uh, they just do it because they believe it will be fixed in the next point release by a maintainer replode, we should probably fix uh, it by our own and not tag it no DSA. So this is maybe some documentation point that we have to improve for uh, whoever is doing uh, front desk duties and triaging. I mean, uh, that's the main question here. And we should uh, try to have more uh, capacity to decide by ourselves of the severity of a uh, uh, given uh, CV. Maybe not all of us are uh, 
at ease with this process and maybe not all of, all of us are willing to make hard decisions. But, uh, well, we should try to. Um, it's easier to to decide to do so some work for something which it might not be needed than the other way around. So better be conservative than uh, to, in your issue that turns out to be uh, more severe afterwards. I think most of the people are doing that it's that way. And so I don't know, but uh, in my opinion, the, the answer is uh, better documentation for front desk people who are doing it. If you have other comments at this point. Someone else? So it would basically mean that we use Node ESA very sparsely and basically just for the, until we have point releases, right? Because we only have for very, very minor issues, we can um, just ignore us them and maybe then we should actually mark it in the change log anyway. Why we marked it no DSA. At the moment, it's like when you read the change log, it says it's no DSA, but you probably have, sometimes you don't know what's the reason is. That would sometimes be nice to find out. Actually, you can document in the CV list file uh, be between parentheses, uh, the reason, and uh, we should do it. And you should read the, the reason why uh, the security team marked it as no DSA, and uh, when it's only because uh, it will be done in the next point for reason, and it's not enough of a reason for us to mark it as no, no DSA. Anyone else something to say on this topic? Then let's move on. This is not a good one. Mm, something that I've been working on and something that I feel quite excited about trying to minimize the regressions. And I think the lift aid and auto picketing test could help a lot on that. But we have to write the test. And talking with uh, Antonio, he said that we could make the uh, cdebian.net also checks for stable and old stable and other suites. And that could be quite useful. Um, but it's something that we could kind of officially try to spend some time on, on writing the regression test. Uh, so this is one of the things that we can do when there are no more, more than when there are not too many things to fix in daily I needed. Yeah, and, and that's it. So I think I think that Guido has quite experience, more experience than me in auto package test. Uh, and I've been spending some time in this month. Uh, things work sometimes and other things and sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, we need to work on this. I think. It, it could be cool. Yeah, I basically fully agree. So we should try to work with Antonio to get this basically automated so that we can, can test things. And it, it would actually, it would be perfect to have things test before we upload these. Right at the yeah. moment, like DEPCI is past upload and for us it should actually be before upload. Yeah, when, one thing is, yeah, kind of have a procedure to build and because I use CoBuilder. Um, as far as I know, the package test and CoBuilder uh, don't work each other, uh, with each other. So we need to find another way and document it to... Yeah, it, it works in, in more recent versions in Wheezy. It's a bit so hard. There, yeah. there is a bug is still open about that. Yeah. But, uh, we could check, but yeah, we could test bef before uploading. Yeah. So I'm, I'm using it with CowBuilder usually, but in Wheezy it doesn't always work. So okay. Someone else have something to say? I think it's clear, yeah, no objections. 
move on? I, I, I just wonder how we would move on, like working with Antonio to get this going. Sorry? I would just wonder how we would work with Antonio to get this going, like integrating old stable into DevCI. What would be the next step? Yeah, but any, anyway, there are two or different should we, things. Should we, should we start with writing tests first? Yeah, okay. because we could try them locally. Then with CI... I'm fine with that. Yeah. Do we have um, those three packages you mentioned, Zen, Squid, eGLBC, e are they ones that have had regressions in the past, or these are ideas, or they have tests, or... I, those are packages that I work on in the past. That suffer from regressions. Okay. Uh, right now, working on the test for Squid that will help to to identify those regressions. And yeah, do we have a hit list? So, say that, that's, that's, that was my case. Okay. But yeah, it could be useful to look in the uh, the previous the previous packages, the previous regressions that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, EGLibc also has an extensive um, upstream test suite, so it maybe makes more sense to uh, to see whether there are holes in there that should be uh, uh, covered and could be co contributed back upstream rather than adding external DEP8 tests. I don't know. What I'm saying is... Um, uh, if a package already has test suites that can run or possibly do run at build build time, it is perhaps better to extend those rather than adding a completely separate set of tests uh, following Dev8. Yeah, but um, one thing is uh, even if the, some packages have the upstream test suite where autoplicated test. Uh, make it makes it possible to test them when the, in a running infrastructure. Yeah, and uh, we could try other conditions that are more difficult to have in a, an upstream. And also for grep, for example, the, the test suite is quite good. So I'm just using it as a autoplicated test. And I have Right. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. I think you take your point. Okay. Someone else. Just move on. Sorry? Ah. Oh. Well, the, the, the next point was other things to do while we don't have too many packages in DLA adding it. You don't know if you have some ideas what to do. Well, I, I think there are a lot of improvements to do in infrastructure, in, in security tracker, in the tracker, in the automatic things that we can do when we try bugs. box. Uh, and I cannot connect to Gobi. Uh, you probably were connected and you didn't open, but you, it doesn't automatically open the list view. Sorry? You probably need to open the list view because it doesn't automatically. Oh. Ah, yeah. Sorry.
is right in here. So the first point in the infrastructure that we should really fix uh, uh, is uh, what we discussed a few days ago on, uh, on the list. Uh, we tend to do mistakes on while doing updates on package which are actually no longer supported. Uh, it's a somewhat of a waste of time, and so it would be bad, good to improve our tools to, uh, I don't know, help the front desk who does the tri triaging to mark them immediately as end of life instead of uh, adding them to the DLA needed.txt file. There are ma many other things that could be improved on the security tracker. We we, we have a, a bug page with wish list. I'm not sure if uh, if it was. I mean, uh, it would be nice to have them done. I'm not sure it must be done on pet time from pet contributors. But uh, if you some of them probably could, and I have no problem with funding more of them when it makes sense. But, well, it's a case on case by case by this, I guess. But if you are looking for ideas of things to do better. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're overrun our time slot. No, so we have two time slots. Oh, we have two? Yeah. Oh, sorry, never mind, didn't say anything. So uh, maybe th this is more for people uh, who are not yet in the team. <laughs> you see other things that would be important for us to do than just fixing packages. Uh, we, among pet contributors, we have this sort of agreement that when we have dealt with all pending security updates, uh, we have the right to spend time on adding, for, ex for instance, step eight test suite for a package which have regular security updates and stuff like that, and generic work on improving the infrastructure. But we do not, uh, don't have so many extra time, but we do have a bit from time to time. So it, it falls on the under the things to do other than fixing packages, but only uh, sort of as a last resort when we have no package left. That said, uh, uh, I believe it's great if we are able to add the uh, DEP8 tests while handling security updates, because this is our investment that pays off rather quickly. But uh, th there's no point in forcing us to do it, but uh, if we have uh, people who, who are knowledgeable and know how to do this and want to do it, I, I believe it's fine to do it uh, as part of somewhat regular updates. I have one thing which, but it, it does, does not fit directly here on the front desk task. There is work pending which Judith and Thorsten already contribute patches. Uh, if you can brought FTP masters again about this sending uh, the mails to the signer of the uploads, because basically nowadays we still uh, forward the uh, reject and new mails to the respective uploader and yes it's a bit of a work burden which wouldn't be needed if that would be applied so if you can do someone of you can ask again FTP master that would be great what's actually broken there 
we, we, we have prepared a, a patch which uh, basically sends, uh, which makes that configurable on, on who you send the accepted and rejected mails. Because for the security updates, it's hard coded to uh, some security alias, DAC at security.tabian. And uh, whoever uploads it does not get any notification of accepted mail. You have to monitor the Debian LTS changes right now to find out if the upload happened, was accepted. And you don't get any reject mail. The security team does, and they are annoyed to, to have to forward them. So, uh, well, we prepared the patch a few months ago, and uh, it's really it's working. Uh, just We just need FTP master to apply it. OK. Uh, I pinged Ansgar multiple times before the uh, switch. But well, <laughs> it didn't uh, well continue. But <laughs> maybe I, I, you have. Yeah, a I didn't know it was a, a thing. So if you uh, can, someone send me something. I'll yeah, we we we'll add the back number in the in the gobi. Perfect. Other ideas? Guido, Guido, do you want to say something? No? No, not at the moment. I can't think of anything. OK. If I said something I, I don't remember, then you can say it. So, so what, one thing I wonder about is what we're going to do about the case where we fix Wheezy and it has a f security fixed version and Jesse hasn't for some time because the security team might be overloaded or the next point release might be pretty far away and people updating would basically become a less secure system than they had before. Is this anything we want to worry about or and fix Jesse as well if, or? So we don't worry about or well and I, I've previously gone and fixed Jesse as well. Or yeah. Actually back then it was Wheezy and Jesse, but I think if it's not gonna be a huge amount of work then we should probably just go ahead and do that. Okay, next point. Uh, I wrote this because I think that we we didn't didn't contact contact the maintainers of packages when we were uh, reviewing them, and I think it's a good thing to do, even if there are minor issues, because I think it's good to uh, attract the maintainers to do all these this stuff. But I don't know, what do you think? Uh, of it, if there is a reason to do not contact, uh, contact the maintainer. When you say, uh, so it's the standard, the, the, the documented procedure at the moment is you could contact them if you think that a, a fix is needed. You're saying we should contact them if we decide that it's no yeah. TSA as well. Well, we are forgetting to send in those mails. Ah, okay. So I don't, I don't know if the, we should change that or we have to still contact the maintainer. I think it, it, it's a good thing to do. So we should maybe just be careful in doing it more often. Or maybe all the time. I'm not sure I understood. Uh, what do we miss doing? What, uh, I mean, Some, the official documentation is rather clear that when we triage, we should use bin contact maintainer or whatever. And the, the, the and point is, sometimes 
uh, we are not sending mails to contact the maintainer. Even the documentation says that. Uh, just because I tried to look for some packages and I didn't you know, found a mail that uh, that is sent to the maintainer. In I don't know. It's not an important point, uh, but I think the last weeks we are uh, those mails were not sent. Well, uh, okay, but then uh, just. Uh reply or make a point on the Debian LTS and yeah, whoever is doing with uh, LTS front desk should fix their uh, yeah. workflow. Yeah, uh, I was just wondering if there were a reason to... Oh, right. Uh, well, I don't think so. Uh, do you know who missed those mails so they can answer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I don't know. Okay. No, I think it's just a mistake or... Yeah. But so, well, it's, good. it's a good point actually. Uh, we all do mistakes, and uh, we should be watching uh, ourselves. Uh, I mean, uh, I tend to, for instance, uh, uh, check that uh, any upload it comes with a DLA. So if uh, someone forgets to send the DLA, uh, I inform him. So it's it's a shared responsibility we should have uh, together to. Uh, notify other when they are doing mistakes. So. Um, I have one comment to the things to do other than fixing packages in DLA needed. It's related to front desk duty. I think Santiago said that um, he and Moritz are basically peer reviewing things when they change into the tracker and I think it would be good if the front desk person would do that as well. Like basically going through the commits that were made um, in the in the um, CVE list and checking to avoid um, things that happened recently with what was it the example you had Salvatore um, which Brian figure out yes that was one of the mistake I did uh, so pitching uh, there yeah. were uh, I think over 20 CVs in one day and I did check them uh, against the upstream advisory and cross-checked with Red Hat Boxilla then, and that information matched, but the, C, uh, the commit uh, referenced to a, another CV, so uh, Brian May then found that and corrected the information. So peer review is a good thing. Okay, we have less than five minutes left. Yeah. Just one comment that I've been using Call of Mind for some packages. And I think it could be useful, especially if we, don't, if we have no DCA bugs, that we could uh, push the fixes in the repository and wait a little bit if maybe someone else could upload the packages with all the fixes. I mean, it's just that. If maybe we could agree on using more call of mind for this kind of stuff. There is already a Debian LTS directory. But that's it. So uh, what's the last point? Uh, do, do you want to apply the security uh, updates in Git repository directly? Or in yeah. Yeah, the, uh, you, you send patches based on the Git repository, you mean? Or do you plan to push a branch or whatever? I, well, I'm doing this for packages where we don't have the right or where they are team specific and no, not all Debian developers have the right to, to push in the, in the Git repositories. So I maintain some packages in the top. The branch for we see is security. I'm attending branches for Wii yeah. security and... Uh, for, for package which are in collab main, uh, so for, so no, those for you actually push? Uh, if there if there's no Wii branches, you yeah. create one, and uh, and if there's one, you add uh, new commits on top exactly. of it? Exactly. Okay. Well, this is uh, okay, I would say. Usually package which are in call-up main are, are there for good reasons, uh, so that we, yeah. we can share the load. So. But also for packages that we don't have the right, that they're not in call-up main, I could
create a new branch in Colab main for that package. This is maybe a waste of space, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I would just send uh, the three patches ready to be applied with Git IM or something like that. Because if yeah, we duplicate also. so many repository, we're going to... Well, well th yeah, that's true. I, I saw you, you did it and I was wondering. Okay. Okay, we are going out of time, I think. Something else? Okay. No? If you want to have a word about Debian security support, but it's not our no, primary that's responsibility. That's that said, it's our shared uh, responsibility with the security team. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you wanted to discuss on this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, just because, yeah, it, it, it's a shared responsibility, and maybe we, Christoph, the original author of it, uh, we saw that uh, the maintenance of it is kind of our, uh, getting to its, its limits. So maybe it will, it will be needed to change the, the language because now it's a script and maybe we will have to write it again in C maybe. But it's something to discuss later, I think. Okay. Okay, then. Thanks for coming. Well, maybe a last round of questions. If uh, outsiders uh, had uh, some questions uh, after the... Do any of you... No, it's okay. Well, thank you. Thank you.